Okay, so the Oscars are this weekend. I've seen all the nominees in the major categories. Let me give you my opinion on them, if you really want to know. Okay, so we'll start with Actress in a Supporting Role. We have got Jennifer Jason Lee in The Hateful Eight, Rooney Mara in Carol, Rachel McAdams in Spotlight, Alicia Vikander in The Danish Girl, and Kate Winslet in Steve Jobs. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of a side tangent with a few of these nominees. Hmm. Alicia Vikander is nominated for the wrong role. She should be nominated for Ex Machina. Still a supporting role. Just putting it out there. Otherwise, I actually don't have much problem with many of these nominees. I can't really think of who else I'd put in there instead. Uh, my personal preference here would be Jennifer Jason Leigh for The Hateful Eight. Just going by the films that were nominated. If Alicia Vikander had been in for Ex Machina, no question. Uh, however, the general consensus seems to be Kate Winslet and Steve Jobs. She was okay there, but I don't see why she got nominated. Best Supporting Actor. We have Christian Bale in The Big Short. Tom Hardy in The Revenant. Mark Ruffalo in Spotlight. Mark Rylance in Bridge of Spies and Sylvester Stallone in Creed. Again, for who'd I nominate instead? I actually thought that Steve Carell was better than Christian Bale in The Big Short. They're both supporting roles. He was better. I think he should get the nomination instead. I seem to be in the minority there, but I really wasn't that impressed with Christian Bale's performance. Everyone else, again, I don't really have much complaint. It should probably come down to somewhere between Tom Hardy and Sylvester Stallone, where I did guess they would Probably give it to Stallone because he was just damn good in that role. For me, it's a coin flip between the two. I really couldn't tell you which one. I would guess, as I said, they'll give it to Stallone. If Tom Hardy wins, I would not be surprised at all. Best Actress in a Leading Role. We have Kate Blanchett in Carol, Brie Larson in Room, Jennifer Lawrence in Joy, Charlotte Rampling in 45 Years, and Cersei Ronan in Brooklyn. I wasn't a big fan of Carol, although I can't say that uh, Kate Blanchett did a bad job. Jennifer Lawrence is the only reason Joy was even a remotely watchable. Seriously, it's a movie about a mop! Calm down, calm down. Uh, Charlotte Rampling, really good in 45 years. I wasn't a big fan of Brooklyn, and more on that later. But, yeah, Cersei Ronan was absolutely fine in that. She's got gorgeous eyes, by the way. Complete side note. However, this should easily go to Brie Larson. Without a question, best performance by an actress this year. Seriously, check out Room. It's well worth your time. Best actor in a leading role. Brian Cranston in Trumbo. Matt Damon in The Martian. Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. Michael Fassbender in Steve Jobs. Eddie Redmayne in The Danish Girl. Okay. Here I've got some problems. Eddie Redmayne was horribly miscast in The Danish Girl. He should not have been in that role. I mean, for Pete's sake, he plays the role as if he's a dress fetishist. It's funny at times if it wasn't so painfully wrong. <sighs> Honestly, if you're looking for someone else to put in here, you probably want to consider Michael B. Jordan for Creed. Although I thought the love story part of that was a little bit weak, so maybe not. Or Samuel L. Jackson from The Hateful Eight. That's who I would put here instead. Uh, otherwise, Brian Cranston was pretty good. This is going to come down between DiCaprio and Damon, quite honestly. I really liked Michael Fassbender and Steve Jobs, but yeah, the two Golden Globe winners are who it's going to come down between, and probably DiCaprio. Although, personally, I'd rather see it go to Damon. Best Director! We have Adam McKay in The Big Short, George Miller for Mad Max Fury Road, Alejandro G. Iñárritu, The Revenant, Lindy Abramson, Room, and Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. Really good choices here. Um, I know some people on Fat Overlords are going to disagree with me, but I'm sorry, Mad Max Fury Road, George Miller deserves to be there. I really, really wish that there was a way to fit Ryan Coogler in this list, uh, director of Creed. But I'm not sure who I would bump. That's the problem. Maybe Adam McKay? This is 
probably going to come down to between Inoratu and McCarthy. And I'll revisit that later. But uh, the Revenant's absolutely gorgeous. I would give it to him. <sighs> but that that hurts. Because I can make a case for any of these guys, really. Uh, but yeah, Inoratu's probably the one who's going to win this. And finally, we have Best Picture. Where, unlike every other category, this year we have eight nominees. So we have The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Mad Max Fury Road, The Martian, The Revenant, Room, and Spotlight. This is a case where one of these films is not like the others. Brooklyn. Why is Brooklyn nominated here? What is special about Brooklyn that should mean it's the best picture of the year. It's a coming-of-age story. That's it. I can understand why people like it. I didn't. I hate the liar revealed aspect of the last third of that film, okay? The rest of it's okay. Kind of good, but that liar revealed story just killed the movie for me. Why is that here? Why? What is special about it? The Big Short, talking about the financial crisis. Bridge of Spies. Little known event in history, fictionalized, yes, but still worth knowing. Mad Max Fury Road, spectacular visuals. Yeah, okay, spectacular visuals, but still well-directed spectacular visuals because they're all practical. The Martian, really good story. More spectacular visuals, really well acted. The Revenant, spectacular visuals, well acted. Room, nice little story that's just, it's a different story. There's something different there. Spotlight, highlighting an important event. Why the hell is Brooklyn there? What is so special about it? I don't get it. Anyway, back on topic, which one's going to win? I want Spotlight to win. I actually prefer The Martian as a film. Spotlight should win this. It has the best combination of ensemble, visuals, and storytelling. That's my opinion. Although I really think all of them, except Brooklyn are good films. There we go. Now, how about something a little different? Why don't we take a look at the flip side of the Oscars and talk about the Razzies. Now, for the Razzies, I have not seen every film. I did see a lot of films, as most of you should know, but, you know, I do try to avoid a lot of the bad stuff. Let's just go over these quickly. I'll leave a link to the nominees rather than reading them off. But, uh, the Razzie Redeemer Award should go to Sylvester Stallone for pretty obvious reasons. Worst screenplay, I would give that to Jupiter Ascending over all the other nominees because at least I can see what they were going for in the other ones. Jupiter Ascending, they repeat the same story three times and have a whole bunch of nonsense about bees being able to detect royalty. It, it, it shouldn't have even read as a coherent screenplay. Anyway, enough time on that. Uh, worst prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel? Come on, vent for stick. No question. <sighs> worst screen combo? I'm going to say Jamie Dornan and Dakota F Johnson in Fifty Shades of Grey. It's tough putting them over vent for stick, but you know, at least those people seem to get along, whereas. Jimmy and Dakota did not, and it showed on screen. It was horrible. And the other ones are just joke nominees anyway. Uh, worst Supporting Actress. I'm going to say Rudy Mara in Pen because holy crap, she was miscast. Why was she playing Lady Tiger Lily? <laughs> One of the whitest people around, and there she is playing Lady Tiger Lily. I don't, I don't get it. Worst Supporting Actor. Well, this is going to be pretty obvious. It's going to be Eddie Redmayne! You see the performance, you know what I mean. <laughs> ah, worst actress. I'm going to say Mila Kunis in Jupiter Ascending. I'm really tempted to say Dakota Johnson, but really, she wasn't that bad in that film. It was more her interactions with Jamie Dornan that killed that. But Mila Kunis, another actress who was completely miscast. How do you have someone... Any toilets who looks like that. Seriously. <sighs> Worst actor. I am going to say Jamie Dornan, Fifty Shades of Grey. Because everyone else, we've seen them do this role before. Yes, they're bad, but 
this is actually, from what I'm told, a pretty good actor, but oh god, was he bad in that film. Oh, oh just even thinking about that movie. Move on, move on, move on. Uh, worst director, Josh Trank, Fantastic Four. Enough said. Moving on. And finally, worst picture, Fifty Shades of Fucking Grey. You can complain about Fantastic Four, Jupiter, Sending, Paul Blart, Pixels, all you want. Fifty Shades of Fucking Grey. <sighs> Although, if Unfriended had been there, yep, that movie. Follow frankly stupid. <laughs> All of these are pretty bad. Anyway, that's my thoughts leading up to the Oscars. I'll talk to you later.